Section three of Aucassin and Nicolette, translated by Andrew Lang. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leonard Wilson. Section three. Then speak they, say they, tell they the tale. Nicolette made great moan, as ye have heard, then commended she herself to God, and anon fared till she came unto the forest. But to go deep in it she dared not, by reason of the wild beasts, and beasts serpentine. Anon crept she into a little thicket, where sleep came upon her, and she slept till prime next day when the shepherds issued forth from the town, and drove their bestial between wood and water. Anon came they all into one place by a fair fountain, which was on the fringe of the forest, thereby spread they a mantle, and thereon set bread. So while they were eating, Nicolette wakened, with the sound of the singing birds and the shepherds, and she went unto them, saying, Fair boys, our Lord keep you. "'God bless thee,' quoth he that had more words to his tongue than the rest. "'Fair boys,' quoth she, "'know ye Aucassin, the son of Count Garin de Beaucaire? "'Yea, well, we know him.' "'So may God help you, fair boys,' quoth she. "'Tell him there is a beast in this forest, "'and bid him come chase it, "'and if he can take it, he would not give one limb thereof for a hundred marks of gold, nay, nor for five hundred, nor for any ransom. Then looked they on her, and saw her so fair that they were all astonied. "'Will I tell him thereof?' quoth he that had more words to his tongue than the rest. "'Foul fall him who speaks of the thing, or tells him the tidings.' these are but visions ye tell of for there is no beast so great in this forest stag nor lion nor boar that one of his limbs is worth more than two deniers or three at the most and ye speak of such great ransom foul fall him that believes your word and him that telleth aucassin ye be a fairy and we have none liking for your company nay hold on your road nay fair boys quoth she nay ye will do my bidding for this beast is so mighty of medicine that thereby will aucassin be healed of his torment and lo i have five souls in my purse take them and tell him for within three days must he come hunting it hither and if within three days he find it not never will he be healed of his torment my faith quoth he the money will we take and if he come hither we will tell him but seek him we will not in god's name quoth she and so took farewell of the shepherds and went her way here singeth one nicolette the bright of brow from the shepherds doth she pass all below the blossomed bough where an ancient way there was overgrown and choked with grass till she found the cross-roads where seven paths do all way fair. Then she deemeth she will try, should her lover pass thereby, if he love her loyally. So she gathered white lilies, oak-leaf that in green wood is, leaves of many a branch, I wis, therewith built a lodge of green, goodlier was never seen, swore by God who may not lie if my love the lodge should spy he will rest a while thereby if he love me loyally thus his faith she deemed to try or i love him not not i nor he loves me then speak they say they tell they the tale nicolette built her lodge of boughs as ye have heard right fair and feteously and wove it well within and without of flowers and leaves so lay she hard by the lodge in a deep coppice to know what aucassin will do and the cry and the brute went abroad through all the country and all the land that nicolette was lost some told that she had fled and some that the count garin had let slay her whosoever had joy thereof no joy had aucassin 
and the Count Garin, his father, had taken him out of prison, and had sent for the knights of that land and the ladies, and let make a right great feast for the comforting of Aucassin his son. Now at the high time of the feast was Aucassin leaning from a gallery, all woeful and discomforted. Whatsoever men might devise of mirth, Aucassin had no joy thereof, nor no desire, for he saw not her that he loved. Then a knight looked on him, and came to him, and said, Aucassin, of that sickness of thine have I been sick, and good counsel will I give thee, if thou wilt hearken to me. Sir, said Aucassin, Gramercy, good counsel would I fain hear. Mount thy horse, quoth he, and go take thy pastime in yonder forest. There wilt thou see the good flowers and grass, and hear the sweet birds sing. Perchance thou shalt hear some word, whereby thou shalt be the better. Sir, quoth Aucassin, good a mercy, that will I do. He passed out of the hall, and went down the stairs, and came to the stable where his horse was. He let saddle and bridle him, and mounted, and rode forth from the castle, and wandered till he came to the forest. So rode till he came to the fountain, and found the shepherds at point of noon, and they had a mantle stretched on the grass, and were eating bread, and making great joy. Here one singeth. There were gathered shepherds all, Martin, Esmeric, and Hal, Aubrey, Robin, great and small, saith the one, Good fellows all, God keep Aucassin the fair, and the maid with yellow hair, bright of brow and eyes of vair, she that gave us gold to wear, cakes therewith to buy, ye know, goodly knives and sheaths also, flutes to play and pipes to blow, may God him heal. Here speak they, say they, tell they the tale. When Aucassin heard the shepherds, anon he bethought him of Nicolette, his sweet lady he loved so well, and he deemed that she had passed thereby. Then set he spurs to his horse, and so came to the shepherds. Fair boys, God be with you. God bless you, quoth he that had more words to his tongue than the rest. Fair boys, quoth Aucassin, say the song again that anon ye sang. Say it we will not quoth he that had more words to his tongue than the rest, foul fall him who will sing it again for you, fair sir. Fair boys, quoth Aucassin, know ye me not? Yea, we know well that you are Aucassin, our damoiseau. Nonetheless we be not your men, but the Count's. Fair boys, yet sing it again, I pray you. Hearken by the holy heart, quoth he, wherefore should I sing for you? if it likes me not. Lo, there is no such rich man in this country, saving the body of Garin the Count, that dare drive forth my oxen, or my cows, or my sheep, if he finds him in his fields, or his corn, lest he lose his eyes for it. And wherefore should I sing for you, if it likes me not? God be your aid, fair boys, say it ye will, and take ye these ten souls I have here in a purse. Sir, the money will we take, but never a note will I sing, for I have given my oath. But I will tell thee a plain tale, if thou wilt. By God, said Aucassin, I love a plain tale better than naught. Sir, we were in this place a little time agone, between prime and tierce, and were eating our bread by this fountain, even as now we do, and a maid came past, the fairest thing in the world, whereby we deemed that she should be a fay, and all the wood shone round about her. Anon she gave us of that she had, whereby we made covenant with her, that if ye came hither, we would bid you hunt in this forest, wherein is such a beast that, and ye might take him, Ye would not give one limb of him for five hundred marks of silver, nor for no ransom. For this beast is so mighty of medicine that, an ye could take him, ye should be healed of your torment. And within three days must ye take him, and if ye take him not, then never will ye look on him. 
so chase ye the beast and ye will or an ye will let be for my promise have i kept with her fair boys quoth aucassin ye have said enough god grant me to find this quarry here one singeth aucassin when he had heard sore within his heart was stirred left the shepherds on that word far into the forest spurred rode into the wood and fleet fled his horse through paths of it three words spake he of his sweet nicolette the fair the dear tis for thee i follow here track of boar nor slot of deer but thy sweet body and eyes so clear all thy mirth and merry cheer that my very heart have slain so please god to me maintain i shall see my love again sweet sister friend then speak they say they tell they the tale aucassin fared through the forest from path to path after nicolette and his horse bare him furiously think ye not that the thorns him spared nor the briars nay not so but tear his raiment that scarce a knot might be tied with the soundest part thereof and the blood sprang from his arms and flanks and legs in forty places or thirty so that behind the child men might follow on the track of his blood in the grass but so much he went in thoughts of nicolette his lady sweet that he felt no pain nor torment and all the day hurled through the forest in this fashion nor heard no word of her and when he saw vespers draw nigh he began to weep for that he found her not all down an old road and grass-grown he fared when anon looking along the way before him he saw such an one as i shall tell you tall was he and great of growth ladly and marvellous to look upon his head huge and black as charcoal and more than the breadth of a hand between his two eyes and great cheeks and a big nose and broad big nostrils and ugly and thick lips redder than a collop and great teeth yellow and ugly and he was shod with hosen and shoon of bull's hide bound with cords of bark over the knee and all about him a great cloak twyfold and he leaned on a grievous cudgel and aucassin came unto him and was afraid when he beheld him fair brother god aid thee god bless you quoth he as god he helpeth thee what makest thou here what is that to thee nay not not said aucassin i ask but out of courtesy but for whom weepest thou quoth he and make us such heavy lament certes were i as rich a man as thou the whole world should not make me weep ha ah, know ye me saith aucassin yea i know well that ye be aucassin the son of the count and if ye tell me for why ye weep then will i tell you what i make here certes quoth aucassin i will tell you right gladly hither came i this morning to hunt in this forest and with me a white hound the fairest in the world him have i lost and for him i weep by the heart our lord bare in his breast quoth he are ye weeping for a stinking hound foul foal him that holds thee high henceforth for there is no such rich man in the land but if thy father asked it of him he would give thee ten or fifteen or twenty and be the gladder for it but i have cause to weep and make dole wherefore so brother sir i will tell thee i was hireling to a rich villain and drove his plough four oxen had he but three days since came on me great misadventure whereby i lost the best of mine oxen roger the best of my team him go i seeking and have neither eaten nor drunken these three days nor may i go to the town lest they cast me into prison seeing that i have not wherewithal to pay 
out of all the wealth of the world have i no more than ye see on my body a poor mother bare me that had no more but one wretched bed this have they taken from under her and she lies in the very straw this ails me more than mine own case for wealth comes and goes if now i have lost another tide will i gain and will pay for mine oxen when as i may never for that will i weep but you weep for a stinking hound foul fall whoso thinks well of thee certes thou art a good comforter brother blessed be thou and of what price was thine ox sir they ask me twenty souls for him whereof i cannot abate one doit nay then quoth aucassin take these twenty souls i have in my purse and pay for thine ox sir saith he gramercy and god give thee to find that thou seekest so they parted each from other and aucassin rode on the night was fair and still and so long he went that he came to the lodge of boughs that nicolette had builded and woven within and without over and under with flowers and it was the fairest lodge that might be seen when aucassin was aware of it he stopped suddenly and the light of the moon fell therein god quoth aucassin here was nicolette my sweet lady and this lodge builded she with her fair hands for the sweetness of it and for love of her will i alight and rest here this night long he drew forth his foot from the stirrup to alight and the steed was great and tall he dreamed so much on nicolette his right sweet lady that he slipped on a stone and drave his shoulder out of his place then knew he that he was hurt sore nevertheless he bore him with what force he might and fastened with the other hand the mare's son to a thorn then turned he on his side and crept backwise into the lodge of boughs and he looked through a gap in the lodge and saw the stars in heaven and one that was brighter than the rest so began he to say here one singeth star that i from far behold star the moon calls to her fold nicolette with thee doth dwell my sweet love with locks of gold god would have her dwell afar dwell with him for evening star would to god whate'er befell would that with her i might dwell i would clip her close and straight nay were i of much estate some king's son desirable worthy she to be my mate me to kiss and clip me well sister sweet friend so speak they say they tell they the tale when nicolette heard aucassin right so came she unto him for she was not far away she passed within the lodge and threw her arms about his neck and clipped and kissed him fair sweet friend welcome be thou and thou fair sweet love be thou welcome so either kissed and clipped the other and fair joy was them between ah sweet love quoth aucassin but now was i sore hurt and my shoulder ride but i take no force of it nor have no hurt therefrom since i have thee right so felt she his shoulder and found it was ride from its place and she so handled it with her white hands and so wrought in her surgery that by god's will who loveth lovers it went back into its place then took she flowers and fresh grass and leaves green and bound these herbs on the hurt with a strip of her smock and he was all healed o cassin saith she fair sweet love take counsel what thou wilt do if thy father let search this forest to-morrow and men find me here they will slay me come to thee what will certes fair sweet love therefore should i sorrow heavily but and if i may never shall they take thee 
anon gat he on his horse and his lady before him kissing and clipping her and so rode they at adventure here one singeth aucassin the frank the fair aucassin of the yellow hair gentle knight and true lover from the forest doth he fare holds his love before him there kissing cheek and chin and eyes but she spake in sober wise aucassin true love and fair to what land do we repair sweet my love i take no care thou art with me everywhere so they pass the woods and downs past the villages and towns hills and dales and open land came at dawn to the sea-sand lighted down upon the strand beside the sea end of section four of aucassin and nicolette recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio